Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. You're watching The Big Picture with me, Frank Rausen Pereira. The SEO summit held on Tuesday under the Russian presidency adopted 16 documents, including key ones on countering spread of extremist ideologies and promoting digital economy. The leaders discussed the current state and priority goals of SEO activities in the context of the dominant global political and economic processes. While speaking at the Shanghai Cooperation Organization Summit on Tuesday, the Prime Minister Narendra Modi emphasized on the importance of countries respecting each other's sovereignty and territorial integrity. Prime Minister Modi, during his virtual speech, also pointed out the attempts being made to hinder with the SEO's agenda. The Prime Minister was virtually addressing the 20th summit of the SEO Council of Heads of State and it was uh, the first time Prime Minister Modi and Xi Jinping were coming face to face after the India-China border conflict. In this edition of The Big Picture, we will analyze the takeaways from the SEO summit. Joining me on the program today are Manjeev Singh Puri, former ambassador, Dhruv C. Katoch, director, India Foundation and KP Nair, strategic analyst. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of The Big Picture. Ambassador, let me begin the program with you first. Let's understand the key takeaways really as far as the 20th uh, virtual SEO summit for the heads of state was concerned. Uh, thank you very much, Frank. And I'm so glad that Rajya Sabha TV is focusing on the SEO. The SEO is a very important regional cooperation organization which focuses both on security issues, including counterterrorism, as well as development issues. With so much of our interest being focused across the Atlantic Ocean, I'm so glad that you know you brought this mainstream organization into focus for us. And you are so right. Uh, Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi was on the same table, although virtually with uh, President Xi Jinping of China, as well as Prime Minister Imran Khan of uh, Pakistan. Uh, the SCO's format is very interesting. There are two high-level summits in every each of these sessions. One is at the level of heads of state which is the one which took place, where traditionally the Indian Prime Minister has represented India, and the other is at the level of heads of government. Now, in the past, India has always been represented there by the Foreign Minister as the Special Envoy of the Prime Minister, but this time that summit will be hosted by India on the 30th of November, and the Honorable Prime Minister, as an exception, will be playing host to that. So. This summit was particularly interesting, even though at a time of COVID that they couldn't meet, because it brings the most important regional players together on a platform to discuss matters of crucial interest, including peace and security. Now, what did we do? Of course, the Honorable Prime Minister stressed what has been very important for him, which is the need to reform multilateralism. The SEO also, after all, contributes to the globe coming together, countries cooperating and global governance. And the presence of Russia and China two permanent members of the Security Council was particularly important. Note, the Chinese in particular haven't been really in favor of UN reforms, in particular Security Council reforms. The Russians too have been iffy about the whole thing. So to bring it to focus was particularly important. Secondly, the Honorable Prime Minister mentioned COVID. You can't escape mentioning COVID in the current thing. But in a very gentle but a very firm message, when he mentioned that India is the largest producer of vaccines and our vaccines will be available to the world to help and cure them. Very important, beautiful message, but one, the subtlety and the importance of it, which certainly would not have been lost on anyone. He then, of course, very clearly mentioned that these sort of fora need to be used for global cooperation and not to be misused as Pakistan has done in the past for raising bilateral matters. And I think that point went down very well with people. And lastly, he told them that he wishes to use the forum, especially when we will host it on the 30th of September, to raise the issues of coming together and working together. And what were the two special fields? One was startups and innovation, in which India has done fantastically well and really one of the path breaking. And the other is the area of traditional medicine. I think all in all, very good for us, huge takeaways, positive takeaways for us, having countries of real concern in our neighborhood, around the table, listening to us and being able to, in a sense, internalize the Indian agenda, a positive agenda for the world. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very well summed up there by Manjeev Puri, really, as far as what really happened at the SEO summit. But... Uh, 
Mr. Nair, let me bring you into the picture now and let's look at the broader uh, picture really as far as the SEO is concerned. Do you believe that uh, the SEO has drifted away from its original agenda over the years? No, I don't think so. I mean, uh, SEO by, by, by uh, global standards of multilateral organizations, SEO is still young. And I would say that uh, in the 20 years that it has been in existence, it has been sort of uh, finding its feet. And uh, now we are approaching the 20th year of the uh, SEO. And uh, not only have they not drifted away from um, its uh, moorings and its objectives, uh, this particular summit, I think, uh, consolidated past gains. For example, uh, uh, this uh, summit adopted the action plan, SEO action plan for 2021-25. Uh, aimed at uh, implementing the SEO development strategy until 2025, you see. And, uh, you know, if I may mention something uh, in my role as a journalist uh, covering these summits, you see, previously we always had, uh, we looked for certain parameters to uh, find out the effectiveness uh, of a summit, you know. For instance, uh, how long did Deng Xiaoping hold the hand of his old friend, uh, Vice President Kher Narayanan, when he went there, you know, to indicate the warmth of the uh, relationship, you see. Or uh, how long did the US President uh, buttonhole uh, him? At, a, at an unscheduled uh, meeting uh, during, a, during a summit, you know, a pull-away summit. How long was that? So now that these summits are virtual, we don't have these parameters to uh, go by. So uh, one thing I noticed about this particular summit is that, you see, uh, so the Russian diplomacy, the glorious tradition of Russian dip diplomacy, always gauge the success of a summit by the documents it signed, the agreements that were signed. And um, this has been uh, like that from Tsarist time, the Soviet times, and currently. And uh, answering your question about the success and the moorings of SEO, I noticed this time that uh, this summit came out with 16 documents, you know, one day summit, 16 documents is uh, no mean achievement, you see. And of these 16 documents, only five were adopted without signing, which meant that uh, there were 11 documents which were discussed in depth. So I would say that uh, this was a very productive summit sure. and a very substantive summit, and uh, it has consolidated uh, the gains in the last 20 years of the SEO. And now we are looking ahead. We intend to go ahead as a regional multilateral grouping towards uh, achieving more results, better results for humanity. Absolutely. We'll look ahead into the future and see what really we can get out of the SEO. But before that, uh, General, let me come across to you now and let's talk about this issue of, uh, you know, raising bilateral issues at multilaterals. You know, doesn't, isn't that counterproductive? No, obviously it is counterproductive, you know, but um, uh, if uh, we have always observed that in any of these meetings or uh, wherever Pakistan comes in, it is, but, uh, uh, you know, it is a matter of fact that Pakistan will always raise uh, issues related to India. Though in this particular case, uh, Prime Minister Imran Khan did not directly name India. But the emphasis of what he was saying was very, very clear, which is why when the Prime Minister responded, I think that was a very, uh, very appropriate response. Uh, there has been in uh, many of these meetings which are taking place uh, uh, where the heads of states are, uh, are meeting. In many of these times when these meetings are taking place, we see the response of the Prime Minister of Pakistan coming in a very uh, rash and abrasive manner. And then we see the Indian response coming in a very, uh, I would use the word dignified, a very dignified way. And I think the Prime Minister's response here was very dignified. But the message was delivered very, very, uh, very firmly, I would say. 
that uh, he made it clear to all the participants that don't put extraneous issues into uh, onto the table. Here we are talking of larger issues, and I think those larger issues uh, are something which are important, as uh, uh, as has been said by the previous panelists, as far as the region is concerned. Now, if we inject into uh, into these uh, 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 into these groupings bilateral issues, then I think this uh, the SCO will also go the way uh, um, uh, SARC has gone. You see, SARC is a non-starter basically because of one country, which doesn't really uh, permit you to go beyond a put, uh, beyond a, uh, a particular phase. So these uh, bilateral issues have to be kept out. And I think that was a message. Uh, it is a very firm message to Pakistan. But I think it is also a reasonably firm message to China also. Now, having said that, uh, one of the main, uh, uh, you know, the, the charter as far as the SEO is concerned uh, is both on security and on uh, development. Now, I think uh, the larger concentration now is it has to be on development because the way the SEO is configured, the progress as far as uh, security is concerned and counterterrorism is concerned, I do not foresee any major headway going there. Uh, seeing the way the uh, the um, the countries are actually placed, we have a country like China, which is in direct support of Pakistan, which is the major sponsor of terror, and that terrorism is being used by and large against India. Uh, though we are not the only sufferers, uh, it is also hammering the rest of the world. So we have these three major players in in SCO. So I don't see any major forward movement going ahead as far as the uh, counter terrorism aspects are concerned except when it relates to uh, the um, uh, 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 to the uh, uh, to the countries uh, to the four countries uh, um, uh, besides india china uh, india china pakistan and russia right so um, so besides these besides that you know we can do something there we can do something in afghanistan uh, but beyond that i really don't see any forward movement going as far as the counter terrorism aspect is concerned Sure. Okay. Points taken. Let me take the points that uh, both the panelists, K.P. Nair and uh, Dhruv Katoch, have made forward with you, Manjeet Puri. You know, as far as, uh, you know, 16 documents, of course, like Mr. Nair was pointing out, 16 documents have been adopted as far as uh, this particular summit is concerned. That's quite, quite a lot of progress, really. And, uh, you know, on this issue of um, extremist ideology, let's not forget that one of those documents was signed uh, on extremist ide ideology as well. So as far as extremism is concerned, how big an issue is it for the SEO and are they serious about tackling it? Frank, uh, you know, when the SEO began, these were some of the key issues, the issues of terrorism and the issues of extremism linked to that. And don't forget, these issues of Islamic terrorism were the ones which were core even at that particular perspective and that particular point of view. In fact, in a sense, Pakistan's joining is, uh, as General Kato just kind of hinted, has brought in a certainly a slightly different dimension to it. But, you know, that's the way organizations grow if you want to have regional cooperation and so on and so forth. So this is extremely important. Now, that 16 documents were adopted. I think that's very good. It shows that the institutional arrangements, the institutional backup, etc., is going forward. And for me, what was very important was that the leaders were around the table, even though this lead table was virtual. They spoke, even though much of it was prepared speeches, but they spoke, they listened to each other, and they would have certainly got the message firsthand from one another. And for us, I think it was particularly important that the Honorable Prime Minister addressed some of the most important leaders in the world with India's interest issues, which are truly global issues and very important for the region itself. So I think all in all, it was a very meaningful summit, very good. And remember, we will have an opportunity to also host another, a sort of a 1B summit of the SEO on the 30th of November at the level of heads of government who are equally important leaders in various countries. And so to be able to utilize this important body, we have a unique opportunity and I think we are moving in the right direction and we've leveraged it well. Right. Okay. So Mr. Nair, you know, you spoke about we need to build on the gains and look ahead. Do you what, what do you believe are the key focus areas going to be going forward? Uh, <clears throat> see, uh, the, there are there are two uh, an aspects of uh, uh, by way of answering your question. 
by way of uh, building up for India, um, I think the Prime Minister laid the ground for a certain kind of equation that we had with the with this uh, SEO region, you see. Uh, for example, uh, in the old days, uh, when uh, many of the SEO member countries were part of the uh, Soviet Union, uh, India's great strength in that region was uh, our soft power, you know. I mean, if I may mention uh, a personal experience, many years ago when uh, I was in Tashkent, um, my friend Manji will remember our late lamented uh, Alok Sen was uh, number two at our mission there. And I was walking along the streets of Tashkent and two Uzbek women came behind me and they were calling me Raj Kapoor, Raj Kapoor. <laughs> so we had, we had great strength in our uh, soft power in the entire region, you know, even including uh, Russia. And uh, I noticed that uh, our prime minister made a strenuous and definitely potentially successful effort to revive our soft power there. For instance, he mentioned that next year, India will be hosting the SEO Food Festival uh, in our country. And he hoped that it will be held uh, in a post-COVID atmosphere. Similarly, he pledged India's total support for 2021 next year as the SCO Culture Year, which will be the 20th anniversary of uh, SCO. And uh, he also said that uh, next year our National Museum will be hosting the first SCO exhibition on Buddha heritage, you see. Then our, uh, the Indian Literature Academy, Literature Academy of India, has already translated 10 major works of Indian literature into Russian and uh, Chinese, you see. And uh, in the run-up to this summit, I thought it was very significant that uh, in Beijing at the SEO Secretariat, uh, all the uh, SEO member countries, diplomats, took part in uh, yoga, in, in practicing yoga, you see, which is uh, a validation of what India has been doing to promote worldwide, specific to the SEO thing. So from India's point of view, I would say that uh, the big achievement for us is going to be the revival of Indian soft power which somewhat took a backseat after the after the breakup of the uh, Soviet Union. But uh, for SEO itself, I think uh, one of the major achievements is going to be the uh, adoption of the uh, co concept for, uh, for cooperation on the development of remote and rural areas in the digital age and also what the comprehensive action plan on dealing with the pandemics. That is something I think, uh, apart from the India soft power, these are what uh, SEO, in my opinion, intends to go ahead with. Right, right. Okay, General, so let me bring you in on this issue of soft power. You know, there is no doubt that there is a tremendous, uh, you know, goodwill as far as India is concerned, and we've tried to use soft power in the past as well, especially in this particular region, Afghanistan, Iran, and you know, in Central and West Asia. But how do we convert this goodwill into something tangible, something that is gainful for us? Uh, you know, Frank, soft power, of course, is a very, very important aspect of any nation. And uh, if you see what the West has been doing and what America has been doing, <coughs> you know, their soft power has gone across all the world. Uh, if you you look at the brand like Coca-Cola Coca -Cola or uh, McDonald's or something like that, you know, these things are spread across the world. And uh, what India was doing, uh, for some reason, we really didn't take it up. But now things have changed, especially when you look at a, a, a subject like yoga, which has just been alluded to, uh, that has become a worldwide phenomenon. I have a feeling very, very shortly, you know, the Indian forms of medicine, uh, the Indian forms of dance, food, etc., they are also going to they are all going to spread like wildfire across the globe, and I think that is going to add to our strength. But having said that, 
You see, uh, software, unfortunately, cannot operate in a vacuum. So it has to be uh, a, a conjunction of soft power along with your other capabilities. And I think what the prime minister is doing now is to put those other capabilities also on the table. Uh, the, like India stand as far as climate change is concerned. That is one. Uh, India stand as far as COVID is concerned. And I think the statement which he made that we will give this medicine to the whole world. Now that automatically puts India in the pole position as far as leadership in uh, uh, in uh, tackling the pandemic is concerned. Uh, the connectivity issues, the development issues, especially when you're going down to the remote villages, I think what we are trying to do in India uh, through what we call the Atman Nirbhar Bharat, I think those same sort of programs can actually be, can be uh, uh, duplicated or replicated rather in many parts of uh, SEO, especially in the Central uh, uh, the Asian Republics, the four CER members uh, who are uh, a part of the SEO. And some of those areas are very, very remote areas, and we have got great potential there. Uh, uh, ultimately, I think the two things that we need, really need to do very, very quickly is to get uh, the, uh, the Chabahar port going and to get the North-South corridor going. Um, somehow, uh, Pakistan still plays the spoiler, but I really don't know how long Pakistan can continue to do so. Uh, at some, uh, very frankly, we... Um, uh, generally, I try to avoid using the word Pakistan, but it always comes into the into the conversation because this country plays the spoiler. And uh, as far as which is why, as I made in my initial remarks, when we are looking at counter terrorism, Pakistan will play the spoiler, and they will be supported by China. Right. But I think on other issues, perhaps can we get them on board? Uh, can we get both China and Pakistan on board? And can India play the leadership role now, as far as SEO is concerned? Uh, sure. People, the whole world is looking for leadership, and I think the Prime Minister can provide it. Absolutely. All right, time to get closing comments now from all my panelists with the best way forward, starting first with the Ambassador. Frank, the SEO is an important regional body, and it's an important regional body because it's got important players in it, Russia, China, and India, along with others in the region. I am glad that we are harnessing this body to put forward our interests, which are also in global interest. And it is important that we are, in a sense, in the driving seat. This has been a good augury, and we have another opportunity to repeat it with these important countries on the 30th of November. This is going well, and I am very glad that we are taking this opportunity of working with players, which are major stakeholders in the world, to try and push forward global as well as India's agenda, which have all a great deal of coterminous coincidence. Absolutely. Mr. Nair. Uh, on a lighter note to conclude, um, what I found interesting was that, you know, our present government, uh, the Modi government, is very good at coining acronyms, you know, starting with the first acronym, acronym Niti Aayog. All our programs, everything has an acronym. I found that this time... Uh, this summit, uh, SCO has adopted this practice, in my opinion, you see. For example, one of the documents adopted was the SCO Regional Anti-Terrorist Structural Communal Report. Shortened, it is described in uh, the uh, SCO communique as rats activities, you see. I mean, it, it is, of course, uh, shortened, it reads as rats activities. But what is interesting, as you know, terrorists are inadvertently right. being described as rats. And mm. we are, this communique is referring to the activities of rats, which are, the terrorists are worse than rats. And I found this very interesting, this use of acronym, where the Indian habit is spreading to SARC. And that, I thought, was a very positive but lighthearted development. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Thank General, you. close the show for us with your concluding remarks. Right. Um, I think I would just like to state that uh, for very long, India has been a back foot player as far as taking initiatives at the global level are concerned. <clears throat> for some reason, we really, don't, we really didn't want to be uh, put up uh, right in the front to say, okay, uh, we take the lead in this. I think all that is changing now. And I'm glad, uh, as the ambassador so correctly said, that the SEO provides us a forum, one more forum now, to take the leadership role. And I think if we, uh, this is something which should be seized. There are great opportunities here, both in the field of medicine and tackling uh, the COVID crisis, 
as well as in development activities. And if we can go ahead with that and take the leadership role, uh, I think that will place us very well in uh, uh, further getting a seat on the high table, which we will get, I'm quite certain, in due course of time. And this is one of the forums uh, which will propel us to our actual place in the world. Right. Abs absolutely. All right. On that note, then I'll call it a wrap on this edition of The Big Picture. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us. What's coming out of this discussion is that the SCO has not deviated from its original agenda over the last 20 years since its inception. Uh, the SCO has made considerable gains and also consolidated on them as it has gone along. The adoption of 16 documents at the recently held summit shows that there is a robust institutional arrangement and backup in place and the fact that each of the leaders listened to each other and reacted to each other's uh, uh, speeches too shows that uh, each one respects the other and wants to take the spirit of this organization forward. The SCO is an important multilateral regional grouping. We should ensure we further the gains of the past into the future. How we do that is we ensure that uh, we uh, build on our goodwill, use our soft power and uh, also team it up with other aspects to ensure that we see some tangible gains. With that, it's a wrap. See you again next time.